So I order comic books online sometimes, and you're pretty hard pressed to find a comic book collector that never orders comics online. Uh, but the reason that some people refuse to order comics online is because they can't trust how those books are going to arrive. They can't trust people are going to ship them accurately. Uh, I just ordered a book on Mercari the other day, and I was a little hesitant to order it, but I was like, it's so much cheaper than every other copy online. I'm just going to take my chances. Uh, so here's, here's the book and you know, it's, this is just a paper envelope with the little tabby on the back to close it up. Listen to all this empty space in here. There's like no padding or nothing in here. Uh, this was the amazing part to me. <laughs> Not even taped closed. So, here's the book. At least it's in a bag and a disgusting 30-year-old board. But yeah, here's the, here's the envelope. Just paper. Nothing in there. So, here's the book, Spawn number three. Uh, look at this, I don't know if you can tell, but look how filthy and gross that bag and board is. I mean, I don't even like touching this thing. This is the back of the board. And here is the book. I mean, it's just like, I don't know if you can really tell on the camera or not, but it's in less than preferable condition. Instead of, you know, complaining about it, I'm just going to show the internet how to ship a comic book. So stay tuned. So now that I've washed my hands, uh, I'm going to show you how to properly ship comic books. Uh, if you're a collector already, you probably have a good idea if you order comics offline. But if you're watching this video uh, and you've inherited some comics or you've got some comics that you had when you were a kid and you're wanting to sell them and make money, then I'm going to show you the proper way to ship your books. Uh, to protect them for your buyer. So the main way that collectors prefer to have their books shipped to them is in one of these. It is a Gemini, it's called a Gemini Mailer, and it is specifically designed to hold comic books all right now you can get these online uh, or you can you know if you have a local comic book store in your area a lot of times they will if they sell books online themselves a lot of times they will sell them to you but you can expect to pay uh, over a dollar for one of these uh, over a dollar a piece for one of these at this point in time um, your comic shop might sell them for you for a buck. Uh, I know some of my local ones have done that. Uh, but if you buy comics already, then just use the ones that you've had comics shipped to you in. That's what I'm doing. I've never bought one of these. I've bought comics that came in these and I just reuse them over and over and over until eventually the postal service has damaged one so bad it can't be used again. Uh, and so, and there's nothing nothing wrong with repurposing these it's cheaper on shipping for you and uh it's better for the earth right you're recycling so the first 
first method we're going to use is um, the first method and the preferred method is a comic shipper so let's set that up all right so i've got my book that i sold and this book was uh, a higher premium so uh this wasn't just like a three dollar book this they they paid you know over over twenty dollars for this book all right so if i pay over twenty dollars for a book i want to receive it in a mailer okay I, i'm okay as long as it's protected but i would feel a lot better if it's shipped in a gemini mailer so first thing i want to do before we get to the mailer is the book itself now this book i got this at a shop you know last week and uh, it's in a good bag right but i want to put it in a fresh bag and board because i'm the one selling this and so i'm going to take out the book and very gently put it in a fresh bag and board uh, i'm going to tape this closed I'm just going to use one piece of tape because I don't want somebody to get a tape pull. I don't know how competent the person is that's going to be getting this book. So uh, I'm just going to use one piece of tape, but I'm going to save this one, right? And I put this in a current bag and board, which is smaller. Uh, and I'm going to put this facing the backboard of the silver age bag and board and boom it's protected with a board on both sides but because they paid like forty dollars for this thing i'm going to put another board behind the current board because it is a little smaller than the silver boards right and then i'm going to put my little thank you note inside and I'm going to tape it up so now the comic is very protected just in the bag and board itself and now I'm going to put it inside of the Gemini mailer so you open it up I'm going to make sure that I'm putting the uh, double boarded side on the back and my thank you for your purchase is on the front when they open it up right now you can tape this to the mailer if you so choose uh, which i'm going to do and i'm going to use this blue painter's tape because it's very easy to get off i'm just going to tape it down here and then I'm going to also tape it up here as well all right so that's just to keep keep the book on the part that it needs to stay on it should stay on it anyway but it's just an extra level of protection so then you want to fold these over and some people will tape these closed i don't really see the point to do that and then you're going to i like to tape mine this way because i can tape right down the middle you can see whoever had it before did not do that but that's how i roll so that's how i'm going to do it so you get your your duct tape and you tape it over voila you're ready to put your label on it and ship it out uh, me personally though I like to tape it up twice and then 
I also like to tape right here on them as well. Uh, in my mind, this helps keep, like if it's in the rain or something, it helps keep that rain out, even though it's not completely filled up or nothing. But in my head, it's just something that, something that I like to do, and it ensures that this sucker is taped up so there you have it you're ready to put a label on this and entrust the life of this comic book into the hands of a u.s postal worker all right so if you can't find comic book shippers or gemini mailers to ship your books in or you don't want to pay that much for it i'm going to show you how I have been successful in shipping comics in envelopes. Now, a lot of people will be like, oh, you shouldn't ship a comic in an envelope, in a bubble mailer. I'm going to tell you right now, as long as the book is protected, it doesn't matter how you're shipping it. But you got to remember that your, your main goal is to protect the book from the people who are handling the book as it's being shipped. So on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description below uh, for this uh, this pack of envelopes that I got. Uh, I got these envelopes off these bubble mailers off of Amazon, and you can, the brand is Fuxury. Yep. Uh, so there's 25 of these in a pack, and uh, it came out to about 65 cents an envelope. And this is what the envelopes look like. They're much bigger than a comic book. Uh, I'll put the size right here so you can see how big they are. But they're much bigger than a comic book. And why is that? Well, in my experience, uh, if it's much bigger than a lot of people's mailboxes, uh, they will maybe leave it at the person's door, which is uh, preferable than folding it and shoving it in a, uh, in a mailbox. Um, but it's got bubble, right? Okay. And you don't just use this. You got to protect the book. This will not protect the book this is what protects the book so if you go to dollar tree you can buy these project display boards they fold open like this where you can set them up and have like your project display like your stuff on it right uh kids use them in school uh you buy these for a dollar okay and with it closed you can see there's a seam right in the middle okay you buy one of these you close it up you take a knife a razor knife and you just cut down the middle all right and now you've got two pieces that look like this well then you want to cut those pieces open it up right and you want to cut that down the middle as well but you get four really sturdy pieces of cardboard that are already folded you can get four shipments out of one of these boards so a little over a quarter with your tax if you have tax on this a little over a quarter uh, for this so you're coming in at about 90 cents for the cardboard and the envelope now I do this instead of cutting up old boxes because this is just so much easier so once you've got it cut you want to make sure it's gonna fit inside of your bubble mailer now 
I do, I would not ship in just a paper envelope like that person shipped me that spawn book. I would ship in a bubble mailer because the bubbles are going to add a little bit of a layer of protection to the book. Not a lot. That's what the cardboard's for. But so here the cardboard fits. I mean, there is no movement like there was with the other one with the, the paper envelope that I got. And you can see it's right to the top of this envelope. So when you're ready to close it up, you're good, right? So now let's go package this and I'll show you the final results. Okay, so now we've got our book, right? So like with the Gemini, like with the other book, I'm going to put this in a fresh bag and board for my customer brand new just put together out of the packages clean no dirt on them tape it closed and you know there's your nice clean fresh comic book then I'm going to take an old bag and board And, I, and, and when I say old, I mean, it's been used before, but I mean, this is probably what, this is probably like a year old. It's not ratty. It's still very, most people would sell a comic in this, right? Alone. So, but I'm going to put it inside this one. And the reason that I do this is to protect the new bag and board, because if I put tape on this old bag and board it's going to mess up that new bag and board so uh, i've got my book in here i'm going to get my little thank you note and i'm going to put it inside and i'm going to put it on this side this time because this is the side that i want facing up So now I'm ready. I'm going to take my cardboard piece that I cut out. I'm going to place it in the center. Now the reason I do this is because look at all of this room that this comic has for a line of defense. So if this thing gets thrown around or beat up then it's got like a good inch inch and a half all the way around it to protect it and then this just when this is done this will just fold up and it's got that on both sides so uh, this is why I use an old bag and board because when I ship this way I use this tape and I tape the comic in place where I do not want it to move so that when it's being shipped and thrown around it's staying right there all right then uh, I close it up like a book I take my tape I get me a piece and I tape it right here and I pull it tight and get it down there right now I'm also going to do this on the bottom and the top just to make sure that that book is in there so now this is really thick cardboard very sturdy like it's going to take i'm putting some pressure in to get it bent right and it's on both sides this is why i use this board because this is very thick very good padding if i received a comic like this i would be very stoked so now 
I'm going to take my bubble mailer. And I'm going to slide my book in here. And remember, it's, it's right at the top there. So it's the perfect size for these bubble mailers. I'm going to take the, the thing off. And I'm going to pull it down as tight as it'll go. All right. And it's in there and it is ready for my label, which will go right here. But because I'm entrusting this into the hands of a U.S. postal worker, and it's an envelope, I'm going to put, please do not bend on it, on the front and on the back. Now, whether or not they're going to adhere to that, you know, that's, I can't promise that. But I've done my due diligence in putting the labels on here, right? So, uh, usually they're pretty good about this because they feel that it's hard and they're not going to try to bend it up. If they bend it up, I would call and yell at the post office like crazy. But now you're ready for your label and you're ready to entrust this book into the hands of a U.S. postal worker. So now you know how to ship a comic book successfully. You want to protect the book. I mean, you can't protect it from everything. You know, if it gets hit, by, if it gets ran over by a truck, it's probably not going to be protected from that but who knows it might save the buyer on having to press the book later so benefits for everybody right but you want to protect your book and ship it in a way that keeps the book from being damaged from any normal handling you can't guarantee anything especially when it touch when it's touched by the hands of a u.s postal worker uh but you you can do your due diligence to make sure that everything that could have been done on your end to protect that book was done the more expensive the book the more protection you want to put in there uh you know for a slab book for a graded book you're going to want to put it in a, a box and then put it in another box and you want to make sure that inside the second box it doesn't move around and it's not going to get jarred and you're going to want to bubble wrap the snot out of it uh, you gotta you gotta protect the book if anything in this video you thought was helpful or you liked give me that thumbs up if you want to see more content about comic books hit that subscription button that notification bell so you know when I have uploaded new content. I appreciate you watching this video if you stuck around this long. And as always, be excellent to each other and take it easy.